What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again. And this time we return with all off of the Almighty Enforcer. It is great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for coming back on the show, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you back here. The last time we spoke to you uh, in 2021, we were promoting the Live by Fire uh, 2 live album. But now we got a brand new Enforcer album, Nostalgia. This album is absolutely kick-ass. For people who haven't heard though the entirety of nostalgia do you feel that the first singles that we heard so far such as coming alive the title track uh, at the end of the rainbow and kiss of death is maybe a good representation of this whole album or is that just one little taste of what is to come i think it's a good representation i i think in contrast to our to our previous album i think we want, wanted to do something that was a little bit more cohesive where all the songs could stand by themselves as representative like singles from the album um instead of like last last album was an album an entirety this is like a like a like a like a greatest hits with 12 hit singles <laughs> you, I, I mean every song does is so strong where i could almost consider every single one of them a hit single yeah yeah. yeah 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 thanks man thanks yeah. man yeah that's totally the the idea was there was this sort of like a preconceived <clears throat> vision in a way, or was it more or less? Did it just kind of turn out that way? Were you like trying to make a continuation of Zenith, and d it just ended up taking a completely different direction? No, we wanted to take a different direction. I mean, everything when when you're on album six and you 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 made a couple of albums, I think that to to challenge your 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 musicality somehow you got to have like you got always got to have something new to work for you know you don't want to do the same things over and over you just want to you know you want to come up with something and you want to do it you know and and that's how we 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 came up with this we wanted to do an album with songs that were more easily digested you know a little bit more like in your face you know yeah well um yeah, w without sacrificing the dynamics and and like the like the the craft of of songwriting that we had on the on the previous album. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, I mean, ever I think you kind of succeed in that with every single one of your albums. When you compare it to Into the Night, to Diamonds, to Death by Fire, From Beyond, and Now, it almost seems like uh, every album tends to have each element that sort of stands out in its own right, but also is hitting you square in the face. Yeah, I think so. You know, that's one of the fundamental ideas with the entire band is, is to do stuff that hits you in the face. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the making of any album, it's kind of similar to what I asked before, but is your songwriting process a very experimental process or do you kind of have like a preconceived vision when you make a song? Is there like a structure that you work off of? I think it, it really depends. I think by now we've been doing like I mean, we've been doing thousands of songs, I guess, in our in our career or in our lives, like collectively. And uh, <clears throat> I think you know, you learn from from every new song that you do. You learn something new, you know. And I think uh, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different arrangement and structures in this album. And you know, you want to you want to you don't want to do all the songs the same, and you don't at the same time you don't want to go too far out i mean I, I think it's like most of the songs had the has the have this like hit factor you know when you listen to it you feel that it has a good like good arrangement so you want to feel that you want to listen to the to the song again um and how you achieve that is uh it depends on the song, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think that there's a lot to be celebrating in the Enforcer camp because next year is going to mark 20 years of Enforcer. So can we be getting like some sort of like a celebration? I know that the first Enforcer album didn't really come out till 2008 with Into the Night, but celebrating 20 years of the band's longevity, can we be expecting maybe uh, an album anniversary tour or maybe playing the whole catalog for a show one night? I, yeah, well, I wish, I wish there was was such an interest but i i seriously don't think that there's i mean that there's such an interest to where we could pull such a thing off um there's like we're not huge anywhere we're like small everywhere um but we do exist everywhere in the entire world and but that makes it hard to pull off something exclusive like that because i think that it's if we were like a huge band where a lot of people like knew a lot of 
of our B sides and stuff like that, then would it would be another thing. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I I haven't really thought about it. I I wanted to do like perhaps like a documentary series or something about it. That would be real fun if there's any interest for it and uh, or re-release some of the albums um, like on like in a like in a in a in a, in a creative fun way. That's some of the things that I've been thinking about, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Well, speaking of anniversary, this year also marks 10 years of Death by Fire. Uh, I know a lot of fans who discovered Enforcer because of that album. I feel like that's when a lot of people here in the U.S. got on board. And I remember when you guys were uh, touring with Children of Bodom back in 2016, I believe it was. And... Um, and uh, everybody was like uh, excited to hear songs off of that. And when you listen to Bells of Hades and you go to you know Death Rides This Night and you end with Satan, I think that's a very, really hard-hitting album. What was the sort of memory and the idea behind Death by Fire 10 years ago? Yeah, I think we got, I mean, we got so criticized, I think, for, for our second album, Diamonds. There was a lot of fans who thought we had, you know, gone soft with that album because we had a lot of like 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 uh rock and melodic rock influences on on diamonds um so there was a lot of people who actually were pissed off that that it wasn't like like the what they would expect so i think that the first thing that i had in mind with that album was to show everybody all the unbelievers that were the heaviest band on earth. I, I do want to say that when you went from uh, Diamonds to Death <laughs> by Fire, it was coming back with the sheer vengeance. On, uh, I, I will yeah. say that's such an evolutionary jump. But but but, but it's all, always strange because then you get like a whole like whole bunch of people who are who are always like whining and said, "Oh, Diamonds is the best album." But I think you know, as soon as you do something, you you change the sound a little bit. There's going to be a lot of people. Like complaining about that you that you changed also this that time we changed perhaps and made a heavier album and next time we might have gone to make a more dynamic album i don't know but i mean we're always somewhere in between i guess you know yeah you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't if you go too soft people will yeah. say it's too like yeah i think in the end you kind of go have to go with your gut instinct right yeah i mean i think it's eventually it's all about like like writing good songs you know i always think about it you know a good song is still a good song even if you just play it on an acoustic guitar and just hum the lyrics if it's still good then you know that it's a good song you know what i mean yeah i feel like i feel like every but if it's not a good song then it's just like then it's just like a production thing or like a or like a you know a gimmick you you try to make people associate it so to something that actually is good but to me that the songwriting is is so centered when it comes to enforcer and that's i think that's why we that's why also why people like us you know because we always have very good songwriting like um yeah very vocally driven very catchy and and very m- like musical approach to the music yeah, I, I definitely. I mean, um, it, but I would notice that when when you made Death by Fire, did that maybe help dictate the direction of what you did from far, uh, from beyond and Zenith and Nostalgia? Because I really do think that you're right. You couldn't be more right on what you said that it, it good songs are what matter. People sometimes think like you need a seventeen and a half minute long guitar solo in a song, and that is what makes it a good song. Or you need like a Twenty minute drum solo in the end. I mean, I guess it depends on the genre. If, if that works with a song, and if that makes like if that if that becomes like the, the signature of the song, um, absolutely, that could make sense. But I mean, you always have to find the essence of the song and why it's a good song, you know. And if that's the character, the characteristics of a certain type of songs, and that's and that is what makes it good, uh, then absolutely but uh i've always been trying to find like the the joy of listening to it in in the smaller things you know keeping it simple keeping it direct you know not to have a billion riffs in one song but actually you know focus on the three like three four parts and then 
you can make every of those three parts great and here's a song instead of like do it too hard for myself mm -hmm. you know do you think in the end, like, a lot of the pop artists, in a way, are kind of right in that regard, where, like, you know, or, like, the pop producers, in a way, because, I mean, I mean, whether you like these pop artists or not, they're huge, and I think that has to do with somebody's behind yeah. the mixer making the song happen, and Absolutely. they've got to know what's marketable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, 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 I, I'm hugely inspired when it comes to songwriting to pop producers. Absolutely. I can't deny that. However, I think in in the past maybe 10, 15 years, I think it's gone a little bit too far. That 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 you know that today's pop music is is so simplified. It's, it's it just comes out as dumb instead of like wow, this is great. But I mean, if you look, if you if you listen to like pop producers from 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 the 80s and 90s and, and and you could hear there was so much musicality so much great arrangements modulations and key changes you know in there was so, so much musical in the pop from the 80s and 90s that is completely lost just to dumbness it's memorable yeah but it's also dumb and that's that that has gone completely lost but when it comes to some of some of the some of the stuff from 80s 90s i'm i'm i think that's a good approach like desmond child stuff absolutely amazing you know michael bolton stuff absolutely amazing chair absolutely amazing you know there's a lot of that kind of stuff that is like mind-blowing bonnie tyler you know it, all that bunch of people you know that did pop in the the, the 80s 90s is absolutely incredible yeah but i think with the from whole... a songwriting perspective yeah. yeah but i think with the whole simplification thing you are right but i think the yeah. whole simplification thing also sort of came in a way not just in music but it, like you know you look at like designer artwork right and you look at logos yeah. for certain yeah. brands or something like that it's always simple 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 you look at yeah. you look at the ads and commercials now they're always pretty simple except for car ads they're elaborate as all hell but like uh <laughs> but like uh so like I, I feel like the whole simplicity thing is really just music becoming a product of the times we live in it's not really like a direction uh you know one of my favorite quotes about art is that art doesn't change it's people that change that's true and that, that's 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 how i see it too you know i can only make the greatest songs that i possibly can but what determines the success is how the trends are looking in in society at the moment because music is after all subjective and it's it 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 speaks differently to different people and it's pretty much up to what 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 the listener associates your music to that's what's going to determine if he or she likes it or not yeah and i mean like people and 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 I'm, i i get so much shit on the internet for mentioning this to metal musicians but it, it is coming up like a lot of people like to hate on modern day pop artists because it is dumb and like you know simplified in a way but you take like yeah. a song like WAP, right? I mean, I can't stand that song. It's stupid. But people like that in real life. <laughs> people listen to that and be like, oh, I love what that is. And for YouTube purposes, I'm but not going to say I, what that I, stands I think, for. I think, it's, I think it speaks more to – I think pop music in general speaks to people who are not interested in music. And that's a pretty good example. I don't think that anyone who is actually interested in music will find that good because it's just like the simplicity is just taken too far. It's simple, but it's also dumb. You know, I can come up with anything dumb, you know, and it would be memorable, but it doesn't mean that it would be good. You know, I, I, somebody, I was discussing this with somebody a couple of maybe years ago, you know, and I came up with this, you know, everything that is good is memorable, but everything that is memorable isn't good. Is, you understand what I mean? Everything that is good is memorable, but not everything that is memorable is good. That is, I might, tell yeah. you, I might, that might be my next tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's how you got to think about it, you know? <laughs> I mean, you're totally right. But like when people want to like yeah. cr criticize pop music because all it sings about is girls and drugs and all that, I mean, like, okay, what were the 80s hair metal guys singing about too? Oh yeah. Yeah. And even, I mean, even if 70s rock, what is Led Zeppelin about? I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, people like drugs, yeah. people like sex, but I'll say my favorite quote for what you just said, without, yeah. when it comes to metal music, without great tone, there was only sex and drugs. 
yeah <laughs> perhaps yeah yeah um and uh i got a little sidetracked with how deep this was but um with what we were talking about with death by fire did that maybe help dictate uh what the direction you would take later and from beyond in zenith in a way or when you moved on beyond death by fire you kind of wanted to put that behind you in a way well i think we were with with death by fire i think we were missing some of the depth and some of the you know some of the some of the dynamics that we've been introducing with diamonds uh and that's why we got that back a little bit on from beyond we were using a lot of like dark melodies on on from beyond and that's also a reason to why a lot of people like that i guess and on seeing it we were taking back a lot of the dynamics that we used on 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 diamonds because that's also been an album that people always referred to as their favorite album so we we, we tried to do something that was more in line with that but this time i think we look at our entire career and we try to summarize it in 12 songs you know mm-hmm. i mean that's hard to do in 12 songs but you definitely did a pretty damn good job at it Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when it comes to songwriting as a band together, one, I know that this was the first album that uh, Garth uh, contributed to, uh, the new bassist of The yeah. Enforcer. But, you know, when people tell me, like, when I ask how the making of an album is and people tell me that we all mutually came together and it was all like a real common songwriting process, I don't really believe it. If you're in a band with four people and you're writing a dozen or so songs, where there is going to be some different opinions. But do you think that could maybe help uh, influence the sound and help add contrast to the music? I, I honestly think that that's a myth that every band wants to live up to. Honestly, I think that if you look at all successful bands, it's been evolving around one or two people. Um, and I think that's what's needed. you got to have somebody who's like are the visionary. Um, if you look at Metallica, it's clearly Lars who is the visionary, but he has his, like, he has his, and he always had his, like, uh, like right hand, James, or Iron Maiden. Like, it's clearly that Steve is, like, the main man in Iron Maiden. There's no doubt about it, because both those guys are the visionaries for the band. They set the standards for how the band are going to be, and they dictate pretty much everything. Um, the rest is a myth. I don't think that any band works that has like that is like totally equal when it comes to stuff like that. Maybe the bands who only release one great album and then they disband because they managed to find that you know sweet spot where everybody could 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 uh, like have a say. But all the like the social dynamics of a group ends. That that's just like it 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 goes up and down. You know, it always changes. I think so. That's really a myth. Um, and what is it in, in our band? I think it's, it's, it evolves around Jonas and I a lot. And uh, that's how we write songs. And that's how we always write songs. And then we've been having the other people contribute with what they do, what we, we think that they do great. And that's always also changing a bit, but you know, that's, that's just what it's like. And I think to be a successful band, who's going to continue year after year you've got to just have that that dynamics you know i'm so glad to hear you say that because i think a lot of people have been kind of afraid to say that because they think it almost makes them look like they're the the uh I'll just say this, no pun intended, but the enforcer of the band, where like uh, the, the the where like I say what it is and everything else sucks. Like I mean, everybody in the band, like you know, there is somebody in the band who's a visionary. Maybe there is one songwriter yeah. in the band, but there's only maybe you need yeah. that guitar player to execute that solo. So, everything okay? Do you see a spider yeah. or something? <laughs> no, no, I'm at the hotel room. I just yeah. like I just like touch the the reception phone uh, anyway <laughs> yeah no i i totally agree with you man i think uh, that's how bands work and especially that's how like bands who live long work and i think there's but there's a lot of like myth around how bands work and how they're supposed to work um but after all that's 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 what i think it is i mean and but i think we found a very good dynamics with enforcer where everybody feel like like secure with what we're doing and and uh, what role you really play in the band oh. sorry i'm just gonna open it more oh no you're good
Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can. I can just... See if I'm getting out here. <laughs> if this is too bright, I just have to change location. Yeah, where are you at right now? Okay. Oh. Wow. Oh yeah. Um, I'm at the hotel room. I'm on Cyprus at the moment. You're in Cyprus. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. That was like. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, fuck this interview. Just take us on a tour of Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's continue. Yeah, absolutely. And I, again, I'm really glad to have hear, heard you say that about like the collaborative efforts of a band because I think some people get disappointed where like they think it's all going to be like a camaraderie and like a whole bro moment or something like that where everybody is mutually agreeing but you need that one visionary you need somebody to sort of like take charge or the yeah leader in a way. and i'm not downplaying the other guys because i think that they really bring out the best of 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 what they do but it's after all it's like songwriting is revolving around my brother and i yeah and uh the final and the final question i wanted to ask you is is um when it comes to uh, the music that you all write together, um, um, does the inspiration strike out of nowhere for you? Is inspiration really something that could be sought out in a way, or does inspiration just have to strike you when you least expect it? No, I think that it used to be like that, you know, before I knew how to write songs. But, uh, you know, somehow, you know, you, you learn from every song that you write and from every songwriting session that you do. So somehow, you know, you, you, I think that we really like cracked code of songwriting um, and made the songwriting not to like some sort of divine, you know, enlightenment or something that comes to you, but to actually something that you can just sit down and create. And there's a lot of like tools that I think I've been learning to master this. And that's something that's, that, that, you know, I sit down, I know what makes a riff good, I know what makes a song good, and I just implement that into my songwriting. So that's something that gets better and better all the time, I think. Awesome. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time, and thanks for coming back on the show. And most of all, thank you for an, another amazing album, Nostalgia. Is there just anything thank else? You so much. Is there just anything else with Enforcer that you'd like to promote in terms of upcoming tours that you're allowed to talk about at this time, of course? I hope we can make it back to, to New York soon. It's been, the times that we played in New York City has been absolutely amazing. You have a great scene for heavy music and we can't wait to come back. Yeah, we can't wait to have you back. It means a lot. But thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, dude. We are here with Enforcer. Be sure to check out Nostalgia coming out via Nuclear Blast very soon. This is Alex from Heavy New York and we will see you next time. <laughs>